Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Slava Jesus Christ. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory be forever. Brothers and sisters, when I was in seminary, the seminary was still in Ottawa at that time. It's since moved to Edmonton. But um, at, in our seminary in Ottawa, Holy Spirit Seminary, Father Rector had over the sacristy door a little sign, a little, a little mini poster that said, love serves, love serves. And I kind of thought this, when I originally kind of saw this, that it was kind of meant in like a tongue-in-cheek kind of way, because of course, the sacristy is where you go in to get vested, the sacristy is where you go in to prepare to serve the divine liturgy. Uh, but the more I thought about it, the more I recognized that in fact, this is the heart of any type of service it has to do with love, period. This saying, love serves, uh, is, a, is a special saying from Madonna House. Catherine Doherty, the foundress of that community, uh, said this in, a, in, a, in a famous, uh, one of her famous writings, and it's kind of stuck. Love serves. Well, we see this love displayed very, uh, very much so in the woman whose sins are forgiven. She serves the Lord when Simon the Pharisee fails to do so, we see that there is a connection between these two Gospels that we read today. Well, first, brothers and sisters, we need to situate ourselves. Where are we in the uh, journey, the pilgrimage of following the Lord to uh, Golgotha, ultimately this upcoming week, and then to the tomb, and then to the resurrection? Well, Lent is almost over. We've got one more week after this, and we've got Lazarus Saturday and Holy Week that starts. We have focused on making war with our passions, with trying our best to overcome, identify first, and then overcome through the Lord's grace our weaknesses, our sinfulness. We've done our best to repent in these weeks. But now we see there's a little bit of a change, a little bit of a pivot, uh, to use that word that we all love to use now since the pandemic, right? We are pivoting to recognize that we are actually headed towards where the disciples don't actually think they are headed to, or at least they know they're headed to Jerusalem, but they don't know that they're headed to, to, to see what they're going to see. And that is that we are headed towards the passion of our Lord. We are headed towards Jerusalem, where the Lord will enter triumphantly, which we will see on Sunday. But it will not be the way that the disciples envision. He is not coming to be the fulfillment of David's lineage in the promised warrior king Messiah that they think is happening. He is not going to be a political leader. And our Lord pulls them aside just outside of Jericho, which is where they are on their way to Jerusalem. And he says to them, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed. He is going to be apprehended, spit on, mocked, and killed. Now, this would have been horrific news. They, they would not know what to make of this, in other words. We know that they don't know what to make of it fairly quickly, too, because James and John come to him and say, we want you to do for us whatever we want, right? That's, that's like a red flag, right? So, so second someone comes to you and says, we want you to do whatever we want you to do. No, you know, I suppose that would be the answer immediately. But he, we, they, this is what they want from him. We want to sit one on your right and one on your left, when you come in your glory. Now, our Lord does not immediately crush that. He doesn't say, you want a bad thing. They want a good thing. They want the Lord's glory. They want to be part of the action. They just don't know what the action means yet. And so he asks them if they're willing to pay the price. This is what he is saying. Are you able to drink the cup that I must drink? Are you willing to be baptized with the baptism that I am willing to be baptized, that I must be baptized. In other words, 
are you ready to die? Are you ready to die? Are you ready to pay the price? And they say, we are. So they have this incredible zeal, this incredible desire. But of course, their idea of power is misconstrued. They've come to Jesus in order to cut Peter out, right? And when the other ten hear about it, they are indignant. And who can blame them? James and John are making a power grab. At least that's the way it's understood. And our Lord takes that and flips it on its head and says, the Gentiles are the ones who lord power over one another, but not for you. If you want to be first, you must be last. If you want to be the, the one who is, who is in charge, you must be the slave of all. This, brothers and sisters, is what true service means. Following the crucified Christ. Following the crucified Christ. And acting as the suffering servant does in true love and humility. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. We are celebrating also something today, brothers and sisters, very much related to that, and that is St. Mary of Egypt. Orion is lending us his beautiful icon of St. Mary here. We just read her life in the canon of St. Andrew. St. Mary uh, was a notorious sinner. She was someone who was, in fact, a sex addict. And uh, she led a terrible life at the beginning of her life. And one day she noticed that there was a large group of people gathered at the port uh, headed somewhere. She didn't know where. And she stopped the crowd and she said, where are all these people going? And she was, it was responded to her that they're going to Jerusalem because the exaltation of the cross was approaching and the people were going to go and kiss the cross and touch the cross and pray before the cross that our Lord died on. And so she gets it into her head, you know what? I want to go and see that too. I want to go and see that too. So she gets on the boat. She pays her way across uh, to Jerusalem with uh, sinful and shameful deeds. And she goes to the church in Jerusalem and she is just about to enter in and see the cross and see what all this fuss is about when she can't move past the threshold of the door. She became uh, paralyzed in place. She couldn't enter. And she hears the voice of another Mary, of the Theotokos, the most holy Theotokos, speak to her and to say that if she wants to venerate the cross, she needs to repent. She needs to turn away from her sinful life and instead come to the Lord. And so Mary allows this other Mary to come in to venerate the cross, and then Mary of Egypt leaves into the desert. She leaves into the desert in order to repent of the sins that she had committed, to devote herself fully and completely to the Lord, to live a life of love in an incredible way. And we have that gospel understood fully today in her life. She is the example of this, of this woman who is standing behind the Lord, who is weeping because of her many sins, and who does exactly what the Lord says. She has been forgiven much, and so she loves much. Those who have not been forgiven much love little. She recognizes her poverty in the face of Christ. She recognizes her desperate need for a better life, as opposed to this one ruled by passion, in other words, she knows she's needy. She knows she's hungry. And she can come to the Lord who is the fulfillment of that. She lives in the desert for many years. And we learn about her life uh, from St. Zosimus and St. Sophronius who wrote down her incredible life following that. She is the one, brothers and sisters, who connects these two Gospels for us today. We have the Gospel where we recognize the Lord saying, he has not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And we have the example of this woman who is weeping at the feet of our Lord and wiping them with her hair and anointing them with oil. We know, brothers and sisters, that those two are connected in the way that we serve. In the way that we serve. How is it that we respond to what it is that the Lord has already done for us. 
Because, brothers and sisters, that is the bedrock, that is the foundation of any service that we do in this church ever, whether it be on the holy altar, whether it be uh, in, the, in the praises from the choir, whether it be serving on parish council uh, positions, it has to do always as a response to the love of the Lord. What God has done for us necessitates this incredible response on our behalf. I don't think, brothers and sisters, it is a coincidence that our stewardship report has come out around this time. It came out not quite this Sunday, but, it, uh, but it's being looked at this Sunday at our AGM. I don't think it's a coincidence that our AGM is happening on this day either with this gospel, because this is what drives all service. This is what drives all commitment to a parish. It's a response to the Lord's love and a calling forth to respond with love. And so I want to challenge you, brothers and sisters, don't see the work that we do at this parish simply as volunteerism, which, by the way, is great. Volunteerism is wonderful. But it's not wonderful enough, not for a parish like this. We need, brothers and sisters, to see the work that the Lord has put forth for us as an answer to His love, as a response to what He has already done. And that is what we do as we approach the great and holy week. That is what we do when we walk along the steps that he walked, carrying the cross in order to die for us. We lay down our lives through little sacrifices day by day. We take his death into ourselves so that we can take his life into ourselves. And so, brothers and sisters, let us not be here to be served, but to serve. Let us recognize that we owe the Lord an incredible debt of forgiveness and that he has done that out of love for us. And let us, brothers and sisters, prepare to meet him on Golgotha and meet him in the empty tomb. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Slava Jesus Christ. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory be to Jesus Christ.